Hey, I'm Mechanical Ninja Engineer, and this is the beginning of Rytron. Today, we're going to start the process of building my three pound battle bot, Rytron. Rytron is going to be a grappler bot with a somewhat similar design to Razor from the old Robot War series. But instead of piercing into other robots, Rytron is just going to clamp onto them and drive and push them around the arena like a standard grappler. Of course, there's going to be a whole lot more to Rytron than just that, but hopefully that at least gave you a basic understanding of what I'm aiming for. So without any further ado, let's get started. To begin, we're of course going to start by constructing the actual body of the robot. The material I'm going to use for this will be from a white cutting board I picked up at the grocery store. It was about 12 bucks and originally, of course, a lot bigger. Oh, and the board's a half inch thick. You'll need to know that for later. Although this is not UHMW, I think it's HDP. A lot of the characteristics are similar and it should still be a great material to make a body out of. But only time will tell. So to get started, I'm going to cut off four inch tall strips Cut down two of them so they're three inches long, and the other two so that they're seven inches long, which they kind of already are. These four pieces will make up the main structure of the battle bot that everything else will be built around. But before we can bolt this together, we are of course going to have to do a few things. First, we're going to have to drill two holes in each side for the drive motors. My drive motors, which I'll talk more about later, have a 5 eighths of an inch sized head on them, which means, surprise, we're going to have to drill 5 eighths of an inch sized holes. So we're going to want to drill the first 5 eighths hole about a half inch from the back, and the second three and a half inches from the back. Perfect, just like these. Now I'm going to make a mark two inches back from the front. Then cut an angled line from that mark to the front bottom of the side pieces. We do this of course to add a front wedge to the robot. Perfect, now with the sides drilled and cut, it is time to temporarily go back to the drive motors. As you can see, the gearbox head of the motor is 5 eighths tall, but the actual motor itself is a lot narrower. And also the gearbox head is a half inch wide, which is luckily the same width as our plastic. So what I'm going to do is take the motor and slide it into the side frame, then take a small block and attach it to the frame right above and below the motor. Like so. This way the motor can only go in so far until it stops completely. So now that we have it that it won't go in too far, how do we stop it from popping back out? Well, very simply, I'm just going to take a one and a quarter inch piece of plastic that's the same height of the side, one inch, drill a hole through the very center of it just large enough for the base of the motor shaft to fit through, slide the piece over the motor, then bolt it in place. Now, not only is this motor very solidly mounted in place, but if we were to ever break it in battle, replacing it would be a breeze. Instead of having to open up the robot and work around everything, all we're going to have to do is unscrew the front plate, pop out the motor, and slide in a new one. Now, before we repeat that process for the other three drive motors, let's first take a second to actually talk about the drive motors. This is a 6 volt 1000 RPM DC motor. It is of course brushed and as we've already stated it has a gearbox on the head of it. When I first bought these motors I thought since they were only 6 volts and 1000 RPM they wouldn't have a lot of torque to them but they actually seem to have a healthy amount. So now that you have a basic rundown on the drive motors let's go ahead and repeat the process and build the other housings. Perfect. Now that all the motors are mounted, it's time to do a little bit of fine tuning. As you can see, these motor blocks are quite large and we really want to cut them down to be as thin as they can possibly be. But the thinner you cut them, the weaker they become. So we really only have two options. After we cut them down, we could either A, secure them in place with a super tiny screw, or B, attach them to the inside top and bottom of the robot shell. What I mean by that is once we put everything together, I'm going to bolt on a cover to the top and bottom of the robot. So we could just attach those pieces to the cover so when you take off the covers, these blocks come out as well. You can of course take whatever option you want, but for me, I think I'm going to go with option B, which means I'm going to have to pop these off, cut them down, and set them aside for a later point in the video. 
With that settled, there's now only one thing left to do before we can put the frame together. And that is to cut out two inch square blocks and mount them in between the outside of the two motors. We do this so that when the robot's finished, we can bolt a plate onto them to help protect the wheels. As you can see, it is a pretty narrow gap. We may need to add a spacer to the protector plate, but it really doesn't matter now that we have something to bolt into. We're not going to worry about mounting or even making the side plates just yet because first, we're of course going to need to mount the wheels and that'll be in a later video. So with that done, we can now finally take our two three inch long pieces and bolt the frame together. We're of course going to want to take the first one and bolt it as far back as we possibly can. Then take the second one, cut an angle in it that matches the front angle, and bolt it in place at the top of the front wedge. Just like this. Now we're going to want to cut out and bolt on the top and bottom covers. For the bottom, I'm going to use this super thin cutting board I picked up at Walmart for 88 cents. It's made from pretty much the same material as the rest of the frame, and since it's only an eighth of an inch thick, it should be perfect. And for the top cover, I'm just going to use an eighth of an inch thick piece of Lexan. And now, of course, we're going to want to bolt these onto the frame, but before we do, I'm going to mark out and attach our motor blocks to the top and bottom covers, like we talked about earlier. As you saw, I just hot glued these in place for the moment, and that is so we can make sure everything fits together. And if it does, I'll come back and drop in a screw. So with that being said, let's go ahead and bolt on the plates. There we go, that's starting to look really cool. But now time for the grand reveal. How much does this thing actually weigh? Well right now with the drive motors in it, it weighs in at 331 grams, which is really good because a pound is 453. So that means that after we put in the rest of the electronics, hopefully we'll be left with about two pounds to build the arm, the front wedge, and the rest of the armor. And that is actually where I'm going to end part one, but be sure to stick around because part two is coming soon. Actually, depending on when you're watching this, it may already be out, so check the description. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video, and if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord going, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to subscribe.